Welcome to Community Homeworks class on lawnmower maintenance. I'm Jean Walker and I work at Community Homeworks as the Education and Volunteer Coordinator. And we're so glad you could join us tonight. We are in Lee Taylor's garage and we're going to do everything we need to do to a lawnmower to get you ready to have fun all summer mowing your grass. If your house is like mine, it's past due and we hope that you are working right alongside us tonight to work on your lawn more. And if not, you can always go back and view this on YouTube or on Facebook and take it out to your garage on your phone or your tablet and work on your mower at your convenience. We'd like to welcome you if you're from Building Blocks or a Habitat participant or anyone else who's joining us this evening. Glad you're here, and I'd like to introduce Lee Taylor, who will be conducting our class this evening. All right. Well, again, uh, my name's Lee, and like Jean said, you know, thanks for watching. Um, what we're going to be going over today is basic lawnmower maintenance. We're not going to get into repairs necessarily. Uh, this is something that usually people end up doing. Uh, or should be doing before their grass is starting to grow. So I personally like to do it uh, usually in um, mid-March, you know, when it warms up enough to be outside or, you know, in a garage or something like that. Um, that way, if you do run into an issue of something that is not necessarily covered in the maintenance side of this, of what we're going to be talking about, um, you will be able to get it in to, to be able to get it serviced. And if you wait until your grass is, you know, this tall, and then you try to start your mower and it doesn't want to start, it, you're going to have a whole bunch of people that did the same exact thing, and uh, it's going to be a while before you get that mower fixed. So, like I said, you know, generally I like to do it uh, a little bit earlier. I waited because uh, one of these mowers is mine. I waited for this class. Normally I would have it done by now. But... Uh, and what we're going to be going over is basically if you were going to take it into a shop, it's going to save you, and it depends on, you know, your location and what shop it is and stuff, but generally about between $70 and $80 is about roughly what it's going to cover. It's not necessarily counting uh, what you have to buy as far as whether it's an air filter or oil or spark plug, that sort of thing. Uh, but what we're going to be going over is how to change your oil, uh, how to uh, replace the spark plug. We're going to talk about uh, the gas uh, and how it should be stored. This is also something that we'll talk about in uh, other classes. Um, and then just general things to look at and how to make it so that your cables and whatnot uh, don't rust. Uh, and uh, they stay operating, you know, those pivot points and all that stay operating freely. So, sounds like Jean's going to be working with us on her mower. So, uh, I have never worked on uh, a lawn boy, so it's kind of interesting. So, um, so yeah, we'll start off. And like I said, if you have questions as you're going, please ask. And my lovely wife there filming will kick me and tell me that... I have a question, so just, uh, yeah, if you have a question, just ask. Um, there's going to be a few safety things. So generally with, with any lawnmower, it doesn't really matter. I like to run that gas completely out. Now, with me personally, I, in the fall when I'm using my mower, I'll run it dry. And then I pull that starter a couple times uh, just to be able to make sure I get the, the gas out of the carburetor and stuff. And then I just store it that way over the winter. You can store it with a uh, stable or gas stabilizer. Um, that's something just like this. Um, you know, if you use something like that, that's fine. This is just one style. There's many different styles out there. But if you use something like that, um, run it for a minute. Make sure it gets into that carburetor. It'll make it so it uh, that gas won't go bad. But depending on the mower, sometimes you have to tip them sideways or whatever, um, and it could be an issue if you have a full tank of gas. So ideally you're doing it with no gas in it. So that's one of the first safety things. Second safety thing is don't do it when it's hot. 
Uh, a, the oil is going to burn you. And B, if you do leak gas for some reason, you hit it on the muffler, you're going to have a bad day. So uh, you don't want explosions and stuff like that. So that's the other. When the lawnmower is hot, not the day. Yes, the weather can, the weather can be warm. Oh, all lawnmower. right, yes, the lawnmower. Sorry. <laughs> you got to do it on a day when it's like 32 degrees. No, <laughs> yes, when the lawnmower is hot. Thanks for that. Uh, the other is uh, your spark plug. So on both these mowers, the spark plug is right out front. You have this little piece right here, rubber piece that clips on. So what I'm going to always do is pull that off and set that off to the side. The reason for that, you see Gene did the same thing. The reason for that is more so when you get into pulling that blade off, that's the other thing we're going to do is show you how to pull off the blade, and talk about sharpening it and stuff like that. Um, you don't want to turn that thing connected up to a spark plug and actually have that mower start up. Because really, that's what happens when you pull the pull cord. It actually just spins that thing, and it has the potential to be able to start up on you. So disconnect that spark plug before you do anything to it. Um, we'll go through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the oil first. Now, changing oil can be, it depends on the mower. So with... Uh, my particular mower. I've done props before. <laughs> so with my particular mower, um, it requires 20 ounces of oil. And my lovely wife write that down for me. Um, I found that in my other manual. Max. If you don't have max, right. If you don't know how much oil it takes, you can download that. Uh, you're going to want to know the model number and the serial number of the mower. Sometimes it's going to want to know the engine style. So, like with this, I wrote down all that stuff on my model. And it's usually located where you can see it. Yeah, the, the, it depends on the mower, too. A lot of times, yeah, this one is in the back right here. Let me show you. I got one over here anyway. So in this particular mower, it's actually back here. So there's this model or serial take a liver. picture of that when you go to the big box store, you can find all your parts. Right. And you'll need that too for your spark plug and all air filters and any parts you'll have to get. So, so with my mower, I have to actually tip it. So this mower is designed where this is the oil fill valve right here. And this mower is designed to be able to tip sideways and drain out. Some mowers are designed where there's a plug on the underside of the deck. And when I have that flipped up, I'll be able to show you that underside of the deck. There's actually a plug inside there that you can take out. Um, that's part of the other reason you don't want to necessarily do it. With gas in it, you can flood that, flood it out, and it'll take a while to want to actually start back up again. So, with that, I have some kind of pan that I can use. I'm going to set my dipstick off to the side, put it somewhere where it's not going to get stepped on or dirty. That's the other thing you don't want to have. Uh, you don't want to have a bunch of dirt getting into your engine oil. So with this, I'm going to tip this thing sideways. And... And there it goes like that. So I'm going to let that drain out. And so that's particular for this one. So let me show you the other side here. So I can do it this way also. This is a plug right here. This is a, you can, I could pull that out and drain the oil that way. Uh, it gave you a couple options with this one. So with this one, I just like tipping it over. Makes it a little bit easier. 
So while this is draining, I'm going to talk about this style lawnmower over here. So with this style lawnmower, you're going to notice that you have a spot where you put gas in, but there's no spot for oil. Uh, that's because this is a two-cycle engine. It's a gas-oil mix. So with that, there is no oil. So that's one of those things you're going to have to understand about your mower. Uh, lawn boys are, are generally that way, where they're uh, a gas-oil mix. Um, if that is the case, and you've had it for a while, you understand you don't put regular gas in it without that oil mixed in. Uh, it can lead to bad things. <laughs> so um, if you have one that is that way, you don't have to worry about oil changes. But you do have to buy. Where did that go? The oil to the nose, man. You do have two cycle oil that gets mixed into the gas. So, as a general rule, what you want to do is if you have that, usually what I'll do is, like I have, I have a leaf blower that's that way. It's not labeled, but I know that this is a gas oil mix. And I keep this separate from the rest of my. Yeah, so I don't accidentally use it in one of my other uh, gas power devices. So, yeah, two cycle engines take the oil, and it's a certain mix ratio per gallon of gas. So, I was going to ask you, what is the ratio? Or Usually it's it like 50. The, it's, it will say on there. Oh, my reading glasses right now. <laughs> yeah. But it will say right on there. And I mean, generally, if you put a little more oil in, it's just going to smoke a little bit more. Um, but usually it's about a 50 50. Or I'm sorry. Usually one, Ooh, one of those is going to make about a gallon or so of gas. So you just have to read it and look. It's been a minute since I've actually mixed them up because the only thing I use is my wheat blower over there. So, but yeah, gas oil mix for this style. So that's that. Uh, we'll, while this is still draining, you can see how it's still draining there. Uh, we'll have jeans change out her spark plug. So with the spark plug, like I said, this one's right up front and center. Ta -da. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes those spark plugs are hidden. Um, that's one of those things. That you hit. That's one of those things that. Uh, you know, sometimes, like I said, I like them when they're out here. Sometimes they're tucked up, like, behind a heat shield. Sometimes they're tucked behind or difficult to get to. Um, you know, like I said, that's kind of one thing I look at when I'm uh, getting a mower is how easy is it to be able to get to this stuff. So Jane's going to, you know, has a socket that's going to fit around that. And just slide it on. It feels really big. There it goes. Am I going to back? Just a typical socket set. And why? Yeah, just go. No, you're right. There you go. <laughs> so now she, she, all she needs to do is loosen it up and then just take that socket right off. You can turn the rest by hand. What you want to do is, so I don't know if you can see that really, but see how dark and scarred up it is? All that crusty stuff. And this is not the right spark plug. No, this is not the right spark plug. So with that, what I do, you can see there's a little bit of a difference here. So this is why uh, what I'll do is, A, if I have the manual, I'm going to write down the spark plug that's on there. But B, I'm also going to bring the spark plug or take a picture of it. I'll pull it out of the mower uh, and... Take it down there and say this is the spark plug i need so that that doesn't happen you can get a wire brush and clean this off occasionally but past a certain point it's just not going to necessarily fire so and this one's probably very old yeah <laughs> so that's that's how to change that spark plug Gene, you don't have another spark plug do you nope that's the one they told me to get at the store yeah don't always trust what they say uh, you can do you can do uh, 
this is why I'm a little hesitant about going to some of the box stores is that you don't know who you're going to get. Um, and it can get difficult with all the different spark plugs and everything out there um, to cross reference them. Let's say you have a champion and you see a different style or brand that's cheaper or something along that line. Uh, they can cross reference it and be able to uh, get you that spark plug. But uh, that's the point of bringing it in. If you do bring it in, let's say you pull that spark plug out and you go to take it in. Put something lightly in there. You don't want to stuff anything in there necessarily, but just something little in there to make it so that you don't get a bug or something that crawls in there while it's while it's removed. Piece of paper towel. Can yeah, you, piece of paper can towel. You put this step over it? No, that won't fit over it. Piece of paper towel or something like that. But you know, just like I said, just something lightly to be able to make it so that something doesn't crawl in there. Critters don't join. Right. So, so then I need to write this down. Yep, you'll need to write that down and be able to exchange that spark plug. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time to putting it back in, did you write down all right? No. No. Okay. I don't have my reading glasses on either, so you're working with the blind people this evening. Yeah. <laughs> the blind <laughs> leading the blind. <laughs> well, I don't know what brand this is, but, oh, this is an NK, uh, an NGK. That's the brand of this. And it's BP MR four A. BP M R four K A. A. A is an apple. A or K. A. A. And I think we looked and looked and looked and looked at Lowe's, and then the man came with his phone and put that in and said, "Oh, it's the same as this." Yeah. So obviously that doesn't always work. So with that, I'm gonna have you go ahead and put this guy back in. So when you do that, what you wanna do is hand thread it in first. You never wanna use a tool to start it. You don't wanna cross thread it. So what you wanna do is, if you can turn it by two fingers, it's fine. If it doesn't want to thread, sometimes what you need to do is, is turn it counterclockwise a little bit until it does thread. And you just snug it up, and then you're going to get your socket, put it back to tighten. You don't want to over-tighten well, it. Well, I don't want to tighten it back up. I have to take it out again. So yeah. That's that point. Okay. Well, so when I put it in, I'm just going to, I just lightly snug it up, not tight at all. It doesn't need to be, you don't want it falling out, but you don't want it super tight either because you can break that ceramic and cause other problems. So I said just a little bit of a snug tug, and you're good. So... That's as easy as it is as far as changing that spark plug out. I can do the same thing on mine. Show you with that. So on mine, the same thing. I got just a little different style, a little different size. So again, I'm gonna put that in there. You don't need a specific socket uh, uh, spark plug. You will have some of the times that it has a piece of rubber inside that'll hold this. You don't necessarily need that as long as it fits that particular socket. I'm going to look at mine. I'm going to say, yep, yeah, it's looking kind of cruddy. So I'm going to go grab. Oh, you see it? I'm going to grab my other one. And Jean's going to grab your other Where one. did you buy this one? Because it's got the letters on it that I need. Uh, I got this at Blaine's, yeah. But it was okay. a pain to get it, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we had to cross-reference and everything else. And I even cross-referenced when I got home because I took a picture of mine. Is there any place you would recommend? Like, should you go to, like, the lawnmower? Yeah, I mean, you can like do that. You can go to the, yeah, you can go to the lawnmower supply places. They're definitely going to have them, especially if they sell the brand that you have. They, they they should have it. So, um, yeah, like I said, you're gonna usually it's the first time getting it, but write that stuff down so you're not having to go through this over and over again. Uh, I always write this stuff down. So there's a new one. Uh, you may have hear people say they got to talk about gapping it. You don't have to do that anymore. But gapping is basically the <coughs> the spot from this 
point to the electrode there. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn mine counterclockwise just a little bit, seat it. I'm just going to turn it in by hand. And then I'm going to get my socket. And I'm just snugging it up just enough like that. And then I'm going to make sure this tip is tight. I'm going to show you why because now jeans was doing it. Sometimes this part here can spin off. Um, it usually happens when they're a little bit older. But I always make sure that's snug on there. Now, the other thing you want to check with your spark plug is a couple things. A, mine's starting to wear out. So that rubber piece right here, the cover, um, I'm going to have to replace this here in a year or so. Uh, you don't want to get shocked if you touch that. But the other is you have this little piece of little clip inside. And sometimes what happens is, especially when they're in the front here, you may be going along and a tree, a tree limb snags it or whatever, it pulls it off and kills your engine. And sometimes what happens is it's a piece of metal that actually clips onto this top piece. And sometimes that piece of metal will just get flared out a little bit. So how do you know if it's right? Well, like I said, your tools and whatnot will talk to you. So why don't you listen? I don't know if you can hear it. Hear all that little click? And it should be snug when I try to pull it off. You want to pull it straight off. But that click that I hear is actually that piece snapping around that. And then I know that it's right. If you're not getting that, you can reach in there with a little pair of needle nose pliers or something. And just gently close it down a little bit and then try it again. So that's changing the spark plug. Pretty straightforward. Jean, you have a question on anything? No, I just need to go get the right spark plug. <laughs> I need to find who carries them. Yeah. All right. So while this is graining out, like I said, the order is not necessarily that big a deal. The order is kind of the way you want to do it. So, you know, if you want to tip yours on its side or tip it up or something like that. That's the other thing is that I like it. I can turn mine on its side and then I can work on it a little bit easier. So, we'll see if Gene can tip yeah. yours over. Okay, wait. Still if you drain the oil from the plug under the deck, how tight should you turn the bolt plug when finished? Um, so, all right. Technically, it is going to say somewhere in that book as far as what it wants as far as a torque setting. Me, personally, I just kind of snug it up. Yeah, don't want to reef on it because you're going to have a hard time uh, on undoing it. Um, but again, like with a, with a socket set, generally what I'm going to do is, you know, snug it. And when I start getting resistance, I'm going to go like another quarter turn or so. Um, generally it's, it's going to stay like that. Those plugs are going to stay uh, pretty well. So it's kind of a feel thing. So, but there is always a torque setting if you want, and you can find that in that owner's manual generally. This one still has some gas in it, so what direction would you like me to try to tip it? Uh, uh, well, let's see. Which gas is in it? Not much. No, right. Not much, and it does have stain on it. So let's tip this. Let's see. Let's tip it this way a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh, this this mower is very, very heavy. And <laughs> yeah, you know, if, you got, if you're not doing it right, because it'll start spewing gas out. <laughs> And this one, I'm not seeing gas going out, so, so that's good. good. <laughs> All right. So, when it's down like this, and again, this yeah, one's not going to have... Lovely, dirty. Yeah, this one's not going to have uh, the oil drain plug and stuff because there's no oil in it. But, uh, especially with mulchers, they work because the, the grass clippings, when they're cut, are suspended inside this deck. All right. And if this deck is totally cluttered with tons of grass and stuff like that, real, real thick, you may have to get a putty knife or something like that and scrape off the excess. This one's actually really clean. So you can just kind of get in here and pick off the worst of it. 
course, you can use a little brush or whatever. Um, the other reason I like to do this is that uh, this is going to, um, you're going to be able to inspect that deck. Uh, this one's aluminum, mine's steel. So the aluminum ones are nice because they won't necessarily rust, but the steel ones, what will happen is, especially if they get a big buildup of grass in there, um, it's going to hold moisture and it's going to rot those decks out, rust them out. So uh, as I'm doing this, that spark plug is off, yeah? The cap's not on, right. but the plug is on. So, you know, as I'm doing this, and I'll let you go ahead and do it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning it, scraping off the worst of the worst, and doing a quick inspection, looking for cracks, looking for rust areas, that sort of stuff. Um, sometimes you have a belt or something like that in there, and I'll show you on mine. And sometimes you have to get the grass clippings and stuff out of that. So, yeah, I go through, clean it, inspect it. Like I said, this is pretty darn clean right now. So, not bad. And also, too, this is a nice time to be able to pull that blade off. So, I'll show you what uh, how we're going to pull that blade. And we're not necessarily going to go through all of it. We don't have time to really go through and uh, fully do it, but we're just talking about steps. Um, so this, you might as well uh, pull the blade. Gene, if you want to grab a socket that's going to fit that, you can pull that whole thing over if you want. It's not the same as the spark plug. No, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's one of those two. I'm going to grab something. And show you something. It's got to be bigger than that big one. Uh -oh. The big one didn't fit. That one fits. So I want to talk about. So this is talk about grass. Yeah. So we talk about this in uh, in the lawn care also. So how do you know if your if your blade's dull? A couple of days after you mow, if you start seeing these ends, you can see how they're kind of frayed and they're yellowing a little bit. I actually mowed yesterday and noticed this. What that's showing is that the blade is dull, and instead of doing a clean cut, it's doing more like a tear. And then you get that yellow haze across uh, your yard or across the grass clippings. So if you see that, that's usually an indication that you gotta, you have to be able to change that blade out. So, and generally, generally it's good to be able to sharpen that blade up once a year. So Gene, you found a socket? You got the, you got it's the biggest one you have, and it's the only one that seems to fit. So when you change that out, we're going to find out real fast here. When you change that, when you take that blade off, I like to grab a pair of gloves or grab a piece of wood or something like that. Or one gloves person for a minute. So this right here, the good thing you can do with this, take a picture of how how it is. And what I mean by that is how the blade is versus how this is. And you'll see when we pull this out. Now the other is that you've all heard of the term righty righty tidy lefty loosey. Some of these are what it's called a reverse thread. So that's meaning that lefty is tidy, righty is loosey. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of confusing. So we'll find out pretty quick. And sometimes it's just a bear. Oh boy. Here's this bear. Oh. 
and that's the other thing is that usually your lawnmower, the blade, there it goes, is going to be, this one's not that way. So this is a normal threaded piece. So I'm going to loosen that up. Oh, boy. Baby, <laughs> this is why you start early. Right. <laughs> So this particular one, so this is what I'm talking about. You're going to set this off to the side. These little magnetic trays are nice sometimes. So what I mean by that is you want to see how this is because this is sitting in just like that. If you're not sure, like I said, take a picture, uh, take a picture of it, and it's going to make it so that you can see how that is and you can take a look at this blade and you can see how i can run my finger across it and i'm not you know it's done I'm not doing a thing plus there's little dings and whatnot in it you can see this side sometimes you're going to have damage to that blade i'm going to say this about the blade yes you can sharpen it yourself but there is an issue with that um some people will grab like a, a file or whatever and go after it. Fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what you have to realize is, is that it has to be balanced. So if I take off a bunch off this side and not much on this side, uh, you can buy what's called a blade balancer. It's going to want to do this, right? Or it's going to want to do this. And the reason why that's important is... You want that blade to be balanced it is right now but if you take too much off one side not off another it's going to do this when it's uh, spinning around and it's going to tear up your motor the shaft and all this sort of stuff so on that note what i'll do is generally i'll pull that blade off and i'll take it down to your local hardware store or someplace that sharpens lawnmower blades it's usually five bucks or so, maybe 10 bucks. A lot of times they could do it while you're shopping for your spark plug and everything else. And, and then uh, they'll be able to, yeah. And they'll, they'll be able to make it so that it's correct. And now, does this blade look like this because it's a multi mower? That is a good question. I'm not, I'm not Can familiar. Can you leave the blade on? Why sharpen it? Or do you have to take it off or while sharpening it? Uh, no, you have to take it, take off. it off. Yep. That's what I think. Yeah, it's just a pain trying to sharpen it in place. Because then you can't, you don't know if it's balanced either. That's the other reason. Um, with this type, I have not seen a blade like this. With these little parts here. If you're not sure, let's say you have two parts or whatever, bring it in. If it's something that they have to sharpen up. Like I said, they may have to sharpen up these, and I'm looking, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing sharpened areas. Because no, my mulching blade does not look like that. Yeah, there, and you know, I'll show you what my mulcher looks like, and it doesn't look like that either. So um, it doesn't, if you're not sure, it doesn't hurt to bring it in. And you can talk to them and say, hey, what is this? Why is this? Yeah. They'll be able to explain it. If you it. have a non mulching mower and you want to turn it into a mulching mower, can you just buy a different blade? Yes, you can. So, yeah, Gene just said if you want to change it uh, from a side discharge mower, side discharge mower is basically it's got it shoots it outside like this or into a bag. Um, yeah, they sell kits where it basically blocks off or it shoots the grass out and it changes the style of that blade. And again, to keep that grass suspended in, and all uh, I did was buy a different up. blade, and it seems to work just fine. You don't have a discharge. Well, yeah. well, yeah, you do. <laughs> this this one right here. This also isn't my mower. So. Right. So in this case here, right, this is that insert. Yeah. So if this were taken out, then it would side it would spit out and sit a bit outside. So. But there's a big advantage to mulching as opposed to side discharge. Correct? Yeah, there is a huge advantage. It just puts nutrients back into your soil. What time is it? 6.38. And when you cut it, because it's way too long, it doesn't leave your yard looking like you just harvested the hay. Yeah, the cows. yeah. 
and there's there's a lot more to that and some of the stuff we're gonna have to get into in lawn care um but general rule the mulcher you only want to take off uh a little bit off the top and sometimes that means you end up mooring mooring, mooring, mooring more. more often <laughs> um but you're not having to go back and try to rake up stuff and all that the other thing is, is do it when it's dry when that grass is dry uh, it's going to make it so that a it's not clogging up your deck on the inside and it's going to make it so that that mulcher actually works the way it needs to work so in this case i'd say gene you want to take this let's say let's not even put it back on all right so if you're if you're doing that you don't want to lose parts and pieces you put them back on throw this back on now, will I have to have a socket wrench to tighten it up sufficiently when we put the blade back on? Right, you will. Okay. So, you know, nice, like I said, a, a good general socket set. Mine over there is pretty decent. Uh, is, you know, the longer handle is going to make it so you can either loosen something or tighten something back up. And yes, it has to be tightened up to a certain torque spec. Again, I'm kind of a, I'll feel it. Uh, but I can look in my manual and say, oh, it has to be however many pound feet of torque or whatever. And then get and my how would you know how to do that? It's a torque wrench. I don't want to get into that. That's <laughs> Angel's class, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can. And I said, if you want to do it that way, the only thing you don't want is you don't want it too loose. So do you know, and this is just a off the wall question if i take this in to get it sharpened yep. leave the mower in my car will they put it back on for me so that they torque it down you can always ask that question okay yep so yeah i mean not all of us own huge right sets, yeah and that's the thing I mean, you know, is, i'm or... sure you could probably even bring it in and they'll pull it off they might charge you a little bit extra but yeah but yeah. pulling it off is i mean today was the easy part right. so and it's I not always it. easy for me. <laughs> So anyway, so like I said, you know, pull that out. Like I said, I cleaned the deck. I inspect it for damage. Uh, if it all looks good, great. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, once it's cleaned out, you can spray the underside of the deck like with a uh, WD-40 or a silicone or something like that. And I'm not going to ooze it up right now, but you can do that. I'll go back in my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes it so that it helps it. It's, the grass clippings and stuff don't want to stick so but that is basically inspecting the underside of your deck and be able to pull that off um if your deck is damaged broken that sort of thing start saving up for new mower because at that point it's pretty much shot so that is that gene did you want to you're just going to leave this off I will go and drop it off at my local hardware store. <laughs> and with mine, I'll show you this. He obviously has cleaned his. Well, yeah. Here, I'm sure what I'm I didn't clean it. Yet. So I have to sharpen my blade. I'm not going to take it off right now. I'll take it off later. But with mine, I have a propellant. So I basically what this is, it runs the front wheels. So uh, lazy people like me don't have to huff and puff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect that belt. And that belt, I'm looking at it, A, it's really loose. And B, it's starting to get dry. So that one right there, I may want to take that in and have them change that belt. I probably could change it myself. I'd have to get into looking at how to, how to do that. But. This is one of those things that you can inspect also while you're underneath uh, looking at this stuff. So this tells me that I'm going to have to go after this belt and be able to get that fixed. If I'm if I'm spraying something on the underside, that sort of thing, don't hit that belt with uh, any kind of spray oil or anything like that. Uh, it'll slip and just won't engage anymore. But that's the other thing to check. And sometimes there's a bunch of grass clippings all stuck up in there and stuff, so you can get in there and clean that out also. So that's the underside of the deck. It's looking pretty good. You got a chunk hanging. 
I'm going to leave this alone for right now and call that good because we are going to run out of time if I don't. Yeah, it's already up. quarter. We can go. So I'm going to go like this. And as far as my oil goes, let's turn this around. Get all my oil's out pretty much. I'm going to get a little big wheel. This back, whack in the head. Break my motor. Um, my manual states to tighten bolt on the blade to 50 foot pound. I don't know how to judge that doing it by hand. Yeah, that's where you'd have to get a torque punch. And, and if you. Yeah, that, that would be a torque wrench. And you can, and the torque wrench will tell you, how. right? And you have to kind of you can Google how to how to use those torque wrenches. They're pretty easy. Basically, it's it's basically when you're going along and when it hits that point, whatever you set it at, it will actually you'll feel a little spring inside of it go, and that's when you know you're at the. Whatever. And we don't have one. To oh, yeah, show we them. do have one. We do here. We do. Well, you might want, okay. You should have got that out so you could show them. I wasn't thinking of it. <laughs> Sorry. Join us for another class. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that. Okay, right. hand tool class. So, so with the with the oil, what I'm going to do is, so I drained it out. Gene doesn't have to do this part because she's lucky. <laughs> and I'm just going to clean off top. I'm making sure I'm not dropping anything in there. I'll grab the oil right there. Get my funnel. Now with this, this is typical lawnmower and lawnmower oil, small engine oil. A lot of times, again, in the manual, it's going to say what kind of oil it wants. Um, if you get something like this, I like the one with the sight on the side. It is difficult though to see that. So I know this takes about twenty ounces, and I know I'm at about. Some of them have a nice 30. clear wide. Right, gauge yeah. That you can, read. You so can actually see. If if you have a choice when you're shopping for your oil, buy the one with the wide one because then you can you can read how much is in it. It's like a measuring cup. Right. So if you're not sure, the best thing you can do is just put a little bit in after you've tipped it. And what I'm going to do is because I'm having a hard time reading this guy today. I'm going to set this off to the side. And call that 20 ounces. No, no, no. <laughs> but what I am going to do is I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to put this back on. I'm just going to let that oil settle out as I'm working on other things, and I'll check it. I'll show you what we're looking for when we check it. So the other part that we're going to do is the air filter. And you know, air filter, you're gonna want to tip yours back over, spin that around. Don't take the oil. Yeah. Oh, I want to show something. Yeah. So with the air filter, you got an air filter in here? Um, yes, but it's a washable air filter. Yeah. You want to tip that back over? And you wash it, and you put it back in. <laughs> now, well, okay. So, the yeah, there's the cover. So this is a this is a washable filter. That's one thing. I can smell gas in it right now. Uh, they got a little bit in there, so they may have Probably an issue trying it. to do that. But with these, what you want to do, clean it out with just some dishwasher detergent, whatnot. A little in there in the kitchen sink to clean it out until it runs clean. You want to make sure it's not degrading. So basically I run my hand across it. And if I'm not getting pieces and parts rubbing off, it's still in good shape. 
I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to wring it out really good after it's clean. And then I'm going to put a couple of drops of the same oil you put in. Uh, if you have a lawnmower like this and you can use regular car oil or whatever uh, and squish it, you want that oil to be uh, distributed through this foam. The reason for that is when air passes through that, that oil is not going to dry out. It's going to actually catch uh, all that crud from getting into your engine. So should we wash this one again because now it has gas in it? You probably, yeah, you can wash it again, yeah. And then so, can we use the two-cycle oil to oil the filter or should we uh, it's ex That's expensive else? to do. Most people usually have oil or something like that floating around like for their car or something like that and that'll work it just fine. Okay, but if we don't, we could use it. You could it. use it, but you'd be spending quite a bit. Because like I said, that you don't usually use much. So washable filters, that style. And again, they're all over the place as far as where they're located. This one's tucked way underneath here. And then the yes, cover is here. And I'm not I'm not gonna put the cover on because I didn't take it off. Oh, this one has a little clip here. So in this case. Uh, the other thing is that when you have your air filter, I can probably show you easier on mine. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you don't get debris and whatnot in that air filter. And I'll be able to show you a little bit easier of mine. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight with this right now to put this <laughs> no. on. Especially since I have to take it off and wash it again anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it goes on this way. So, that's that washable style air filter. The other air filter I have is a paper style filter this one's access from the side here i'm gonna get my screwdriver pull this out now these are designed thanks gene i knew that was gonna ask for it these are designed to just to be a paper style filter and you can see yes, it's very dirty i know well, i got a lot of crud i mulch up my leaves and stuff so this is why i get all this stuff in there paper ones are not designed to be washed these are disposable now by tapping it out like that is it good sometimes but sometimes not you can hold it up to the light and look through it um, you know, if you're really in a pinch and you can't afford it, you can get in there and kind of clean it off, compressed air or something like that. Soft brush. Soft brush, something, right? But with this, I just got a new one. None of these parts are horrendously expensive. No, this was, I don't know, three bucks or so. So this is what I'm talking about with this. This is pulling air into, uh, the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off. And again, I'm careful not to drop a bunch of crud in there. I'm going to clean this off. The cover itself, you can take the cover and you can clean that cover off depending on how filthy it is. You can see the cover here. If you don't really want to clean it off, you just kind of tap it and get all that crud out because the way this is working is it's pulling air from the underside in. Normally I'm going to take this inside and do a quick rinse on it in the mop sink or something like that. But for today's purpose, I'm going to get the new one and I'm going to put this in. And it's going to sit like this. It just fits right in there. Fits nice and snug. I'm going to put these back in like that and line up that screw. Close it up. And get that screw in there and gauge it. And just tighten that up. And that's changing that air filter. This is that pretty straightforward on that. It makes so your engine runs much better. Talk about yours, talk about that. And again, if you have questions, ask as we're going. So the other thing 
that I like to do is conceive it. Some kind of a penetrating oil. Um, you want to hit the spots that have either metal on metal or a uh, moving part. And what I mean by that is, this is your adjustment here. Yeah. This is your adjustment here. And down here, there's spots where you have metal rubbing on metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that a little bit. And I'm gonna actually work that in a little bit and then set it back to where it was. I'm gonna do that on all four wheels adjustments. You can sometimes squirt it in here just to make it so that that wheel, and this is a drive wheel, that's not gonna do it. <laughs> this wheel, it's gonna make it so that that wheel can spin a little bit easier. But again, you have to make sure it's good for plastic. Also, I'm gonna check these, uh, you know, as far as the bolts holding those wheels on, I'm gonna make sure that they're snug down a little bit. And when you're doing it, how, what height should your wheels be set at? So generally for the health of your grass, uh, I have mine set about as high as I can possibly go, and that's about three inches. What I'm doing is I'm taking a measurement off the bottom of the deck here to the surface. It's sitting on a piece of foam right now. So you don't believe the numbers? Well, well have some numbers. have numbers, right. So mine doesn't. <laughs> I don't have, I don't know how high this is unless they take a measurement versus jeans has it set oh, where so one inch, down. inch and a half, two inch, two and a half, three, three and a half. And you have to set that on all four wheels. You want them all If not, your arm looks really weird. <laughs> right. Um, it is healthier for your grass, the taller the grass. So usually between, I, I like it right around three. If you're curious what it looks like, that's what it looks like at three inches tall. <laughs> so it's, it's nice uh, and thick and lush at three. Right. And it doesn't, it doesn't, you're not scalping that yard. You're not scalping that grass where it's burning it and all that. It's actually keeping, keeping the grass healthier and helping to keep like, uh, weeds and whatnot from getting light to be able to, to germinate. It grow. also prevents you from scalping any roots that might be exposed right. and doing your blading. Yep. So, now like could I, said, I use that oil on the filter? On the filter? You probably could, yeah. Okay. You could probably use a lightweight oil. Only op option. <laughs> the other is, is where I have springs. So in this case here, I got a spring right here, and I have a spring right here. Do a quick hit with that. The other is, and I broke it. But I didn't really break it. <laughs> Gene broke it. I broke it. <laughs> no, I hit it with my head. Oh, that's really broke. Nah, it's not really broke. It probably has had, but not the lawnmower. <laughs> no, so probably the lawnmower. I'm show you this part right here. <laughs> so in this case here, this is my drive. This is what I have to hold to make, keep that mower running. It's a metal cable, and it's running through this sleeve. All the way down. All the way down. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I like to, you should be wearing glasses with this, because it likes to squirt back a little bit. I hit that. And what I'm doing is I'm working that oil down into that tube. You don't need a ton, but you need enough to be able to work it down in. And that's going to make it so that that cable is least is less likely to snap. Um, um I just bought a new mower. Should I lubricate those areas yep. now? Or did the factory already do it? They most likely did it, but it doesn't hurt to do it to get used to doing it. And are you using WD-40? Yeah, WD-40 is fine. You can use, there's a lot of different things. You can use like a silicone base or anything like that. And you can get it with these cool little straws and the push button to... Right. This is, you know, just makes so I can either get into what spot. So... In this case, I have the, the, the piece that's going to make it so my mower is running. This is the safety bar, so when I let go, it's going to kill the motor. And then the other is the piece that fell off. And I'll show you how we're going to fix that. We're going to do the same thing and work that stuff down into that. And then, like I said, wipe that cable. The other thing, when you're wiping that cable, 
with that uh, oily rag, you're going to tell if there's frays or whatever. If you get frays on this, um, that's when you may want to have it taken in and they'll be able to replace that cable. Everything is fixable on your mower, pretty much, other pretty than much. the deck. Right. Well, yeah, you can buy a new deck, but at that point, you're. You might as well buy a new mower. Right. <laughs> Come on around here. So, this is the other reason why I talk about don't use this uh, when it's hot. You know, I got this cable right here. I can, if I'm going to spray it, I don't want to spray the muffler. I know that's the muffler right there. Usually there's some kind of a cage around it. So, if I'm going to spray it, I'm going to go like this and steal it back from Gene. Sorry. Gene. <laughs> I'm going to go like this. Ew. And just do a quick hit on that. I'll give this back to Gene. That way I'm not getting this oil all over that muffler. Because it will smoke. It will smoke and stink and everything else. So your cables, whatever. Each one's going to be a little different. Do not oil this. This is your pull, <laughs> this is your pull cord. Um, don't oil that. But another inspection you can do is how does that pull cord look? So again, this is usually just a cloth cord. And I can pull this because that spark plug is disconnected. I'm gonna do a quick inspection on that cord. I'm just looking to see if it's frayed. If it's frayed out, I wanna get that replaced. And no, we don't get into how to recoil that, not today. So um, yeah, just all those pivot points. Uh, anywhere where you have cables running, this is the other one. Free have metal on metal, so I'm gonna squirt a little bit in here, and I'm gonna squirt a little bit in here, and I'll put this piece back on here. So in there, yep, just like that. Yeah, and then the other is when I have my rag and it's all covered in oil and stuff, you know, when you're done, it's going to be all oiled up like that. Uh, what I'll do is good old farmer's wax. I'll clean off the top of this deck and I'm going to just wipe off my excess oil right on that. And it's going to help keep all that debris and whatnot. Same as the underside of the deck. You don't want a bunch of crud all built up in here, rotting that deck out. So I clean that stuff off. You can do it with a leaf blower or just brush it off with a broom. But like I said, that simple oil laden rag is kind of a nice basic wax just to kind of keep that water. But if, but is this just discoloration or is this dirt? That's dirt. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, fun. it's that is basically it. There are other things you can do. As I said, most mowers are going to be relatively similar. Uh, you're going to have some differences on them. But again, once you get used to it, you're going to be able to usually knock this out in, oh, half hour or so uh, with changing oil and everything else. Uh, at this point, you know, I'm going to check my oil. Oh, hang on. It would be great if Lee could post a pic of, this, of his torque wrench later. Okay. I will get it afterwards. So with this, what I'm looking for is the oil level. See those hash marks in there? I'm trying to keep moving it. I'm trying to do it so you can see it. Usually there's hash marks. And that oil level you want somewhere in the middle. You don't want too much. You don't want too little. But usually right in the middle is good. So that's where it's better to add a little bit if you're not sure. Add a little bit, fully engage it, make sure it's pressed all the way down, pull it out, and I'm going to check, and nope, it's not even registering, so I know I need a little bit more. It's actually going to hurt the engine if it has too much oil in it. So when you get to that point, um, slowly add that oil. Um, you can, like I said, that's where it's nice, where you can actually physically be able to see that to know exactly how much you're dumping in. And some people just say it's worth it to them. They know their they know their engine takes say 20 ounces they're gonna buy 20 ounces 
and they just have to dump it all in and they're done with it. That's up to you. So the last thing I like to check is with the oil is I'm a, I don't have it right now. Before I put it somewhere where I can take it and get it recycled, I'm going to run a, a magnet in there. I'm going to get my magnet and zoom it around in there. And what I'm looking for is if there is a bunch of metal shavings on that magnet. If You're always going to get some. But if you have an excessive amount, what you're asking is, is that it's, it's meaning that you're getting a lot of wear and tear uh, in your engine. And when you start getting excessive amounts of it, that's when you want to start saving your money for a new mower because it's slowly dying. And at that point, half time, it's not even worth trying to have that engine repaired at that point. Yes. So. And make sure you take your oil to a recycled place. Don't yep. just dump it down the drain or in the garbage. Right. Yep. So or like with mine, right. yeah, like with mine, you know, we change our oil on our cards and stuff. I had something like this. I'll dump it in. This catches it. You can even use this. And I take this down to, you know, most of the automotive stores will recycle it for free. You'll say, I got oil. And you walk in the back, you dump it in. You may have to sign a paper and say, you're good. And it's free. So, yeah, there's no reason to dump that oil anywhere than someplace to be recycled. So that's it, pretty much. And as I said, usually it's uh, when we're done with this class, people are kind of like, well, that's simple. And that's the point. It is simple. Save your money for when you actually have something you should be taking that mower in, like a frayed cable or something along that line. And then storage, keep them inside or in a shed. If they have to live outside, throw a tarp over them. Uh, you know, just them sitting there getting wet and rusting and stuff is just going to shorten the life of that mower tremendously. So. Well, and if every year the $80 you didn't spend taking it somewhere along with having to lift it in and out of your car and having, you know, the grass and all that stuff in your car, put it aside for your new mower that you'll need in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said you treat a mower nice, even a simple basic mower, it should easily last you at least 10 to 15 years. So I said most of my mowers, I think my last one was like almost 25 years old and the, the piston finally went out and threw a rod. So my deck rotted through and more grass went up like a fountain than anything else. Right. So, so yeah, you know, he like said treated right. You know, these mowers are going to last pretty good. Uh, you know, especially if uh, you do these simple little steps. So that's it. Anybody else have any questions? Do you have any questions? Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> if you do have well, questions, job, the, Jean, great workshop. the, Email address has been scrolling across the bottom and just send those questions to us and we will get them back out to you. Um, watch next week. We'll show you a picture of the torque wrench, even if it doesn't go with class. And there again, we just always like to remind you that we do rely on people's generosity of donations to keep us going. Um, and there again, that information scrolled across this and you can always go back and watch this entire video on YouTube or on our Facebook page. We hope you learned a lot about your mower tonight and we hope we saved you some money and time and effort. And again, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lori. She's getting absolutely wonderful at being our videographer. <laughs> And we certainly appreciate being able to bring you virtual classes to help keep us all taking care of our homes. Again, thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Bye. 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 Okay.